Okay, once again, we're here with an all game this time round, played by Zaphoid. Zaphoid goes 2, 8, and 6 in this game. He's currently in gold 4. How do you think you played? Got put into a Diamond Plus game and was very nervous from the beginning. Overall, I think I played terribly compared to how I usually do as an AD carry. I mean it. I got shut down early by the opposing duo lane, and I could never recover in the end. Okay, I'm going to pause now just for a second while I read the rest of this. What specific games you struggle with? Early game got shut down quickly. Positioning, I always felt that I was very easy target. What aspects of the game did you feel comfortable with? Not much this game. Managed to get my head straight for a bit, but in the end, that was, too, that was about it. Okay, first thing I'm going to talk about. Um, how can I do this one? What's the best way? I mean, this game's going to be massive. That'll do. Let's do this. Okay. First thing I want to talk to you about is never be scared of your opponents. Okay. Don't go in nervous just because of their divisions. My best advice to you is don't check their divisions if you're worried about people of higher division playing off against you. You need to look at yourself and your own individual play. Okay. After the game, you can go back and go, God, that guy was a diamond player. I shit all over his face. Or at the same time, you can go back and go, Oh, that makes sense why I lost now because he was high, he was diamond. So what was the difference between him and me in the lane and how could I have corrected that? Playing against higher opponents and more skillful opponents helps you, honestly, in the long run to get better. Playing against more difficult opponents is the way forward and it's the way you improve and get better. Um, worrying about the opponents you're facing off about is not going to put you in the right mindset. So don't look up their um, ability if you're worried about the ones that you might face, okay? If you're looking at their ability to go, okay, this guy's a diamond one, I'm going to shit on him. I'm going to be great. That's fine. But if you're going to go in there and go, Oh God, it's a diamond. I don't know, Davey. I don't think I can do this very well. Don't go in with that mindset. Okay? Work on your individual skill and realize that just because there's a loss, you probably learned more from this one game, this one game as all, than you've actually learned in the past 10 of people at the same level as you. Okay? So we'll go through it and we'll give you some advice back and we'll see what we can actually do that will correct a few things from this game. Just correct that a little bit first. We can speed up through the first few moments as usual and see what's going on here. God, this always takes so long for the minions to spawn. So, let's look at the lane first of all. Rama versus Ul is a pretty good matchup in Ul's favour, in fairness. Rama's okay against it, but Ul's got some good card play to it. You're with a Geb, you're up against an Ares. Ares versus Geb is in G Ares' favour 100%. Geb gets pooped on by Ares, so you're looking to play very safe. What I would have done as well is been pressing Tab and going off. They got Vanguard. He's gone watch his gift, so he's not got much defence to deal with Ares here. Be very, very careful about fighting. You're going to be wanting to give up the lane pressure for the most part in this one just because you're with a Geb. There's nothing else you can do here. It's Geb versus Ares. Uh, and, and the Geb went to watch his gift. So he's going to get poked a lot, which means you'll get poked a lot, which means you could die. I'm not giving you back and away here. They hit two already. Don't walk too far forward here. Should have backed up earlier then. You should have been backing up earlier was the key. Didn't need to leap. You didn't need to leap them. Was the only thing I'd say about that. You didn't need to leap out. You had chains on you, okay. But they were burning you. They had a minion wave coming. You were okay. Focus on farming. Don't stand in the minion wave if you can help it. But I know you need to line up for your shots with your arrows as well. So just focus on farming. No need for the axe then. The axe is a waste of mana, okay? Using the axe when you did is just a waste of mana. Are you going to get a kill by throwing that axe in his face? No. Is he going to take poke from minions? No. Is he going to be able to do anything against Geb? Is Geb going to be able to do any follow-up? No. So what did you actually do there? Well, all you did was just threw away mana. You literally threw away mana. Now they're going to go aggressive because you've got no CC to defend against his aggression onto Geb. The axe would have been perfect here to just to stop this saving flash and the chains from continuing to spread onto him. Geb could be able to walk away. So Geb's going to go down. I'm not surprised. This Geb versus Ares. I warned you about it when I saw the lane matchup. And that's what you need to be thinking going into your games too. Oh, 
Obviously, because you lost mana as well by throwing out the axe, you put yourself harder into the wave. Just got to play safe. Play safe. They're pushing it anyway, so don't walk up too far. Potential to base there was available, but you're staying. Which is okay, but you just got to watch your positioning again. You're low on mana, remember. If you walks up and change your plus, they got first kill. Who got the first kill, by the way? We should check that one in Rama got it. So Rama will hit level 5 before you. And if you're low mana, you've only got enough for an axe or a leap. That's about it. Don't think you needed to leap away there. You just shouldn't really poked with him and traded with him. Okay, base. Just base. He's going to try and zone you. He knows what he's doing against you. And you're giving him the respect that... You, you're giving him too much respect for it. So what you should be doing is probably basing if he does that again. I like the fact you backed up. He's not really done anything there to you. Good axe. You're trying to overduke with low mana. You're dead. Unfortunate. Your first death could have been prevented. I probably would have based earlier on just because of how the lane went. He was going to hit five before you. You'd had no mana from the early stages. And that's what's put you behind early on in this game. It's not always nice to have to base, okay? But sometimes you do. It's sometimes it's better to base than just to stick around like you did do. And now because of the way you bought your items, you're going to have to like clear two waves and be basing again. He's already got Devour's gone or something. So you know they're rotating. Good leap. Really good leap. Really, really good leap. You should be out. No, no, stop fighting. Stop fighting. Don't tend to fight. You're getting out. We're leaving on a jet plane. Leaving on a jet plane. Don't know when I'll be back again. Alright, potential for a pickup here. Good. Arrows over the top. Shouldn't have got too close. Okay. Against Rama. When you're duking, when, you, when you're duking against the Rama, okay, run in that direction for a while, okay, and start a step. What you're actually doing at the moment, I'm going to put my mouse on the screen to show you what you're actually doing, okay, is you're running in a direction for about half a second, and then you're coming back on yourself. So by doing that, you're never going to get missed. He's going to notice your pattern straight away. Just run straight, and then duke. Run straight, then duke, or just cut off. Don't try and do this thing of like just going. It's not going to work out for you. That's going to get you killed because you're pretty much if you hit your dead center there and you're going here, 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 here. You're not going to survive. What you need to do is just run further and then randomly stop. So it'd be more like raw stop, raw stop, and then sometimes you back on yourself. You've got to kind of mix it up a little bit. You're in a lot of the Rama ults. Um, honestly, it's about their skill level is the reason whether you're going to live from it. The other thing you did wrong in that little engagement is you just hung in there too long. You came in too deep uh, to try and get the Ares kill, and in doing so, you set Rama up for a kill. He will die, but he could have been better for you. You're not out of this game by any stretch of the imagination, though. At this point in the game, you're not out of it. You've got Devour's Gauntlet online. If you're checking with the gold right now, he's got boots over you. That's the only difference, and he's got 11 stacks. Plus, your purple buff's still standing, so you're not all doom and gloom. Did we need to hard push that? Did we need to hard push that wave then? Let's look at it. We've spoke about lane freezing before in previous videos, and this is an opportunity where you should be lane freezing. Denying him some creeps. I need you to respawn first so I can show it. There we go. Where are you? Look at the wave, okay? Look at the wave. Just stop here. Look at this. He's got three minions, okay? And there's loads of his minions. So. If you freeze this wave, you're going to deny him three creeps, first of all, and you're going to be safer under your tower. Remember what I said about this lane matchup? You should know this yourself, that this is a negative matchup just because of how it's gone already at the start. Gev versus Ares is not good. Rama versus Ul is a trade-off. Generally in Ul's favor, though, but if Ares gets going, then he can cause you a lot of issues, too. What I would have looked to do here is just freeze this wave. You didn't have to do what you did, but in the end, by your decision-making, you've now given him two creeps that he shouldn't have had. You shouldn't have had these two creeps at all. And you could have been positioning yourself way, way, way back here. Way, way, way back here. There's nothing else for you to do. You don't know what he's probably doing purple buff because you're doing your purple buff. So we shouldn't have pushed that. By pushing that, we just give ourselves nothing to do. Now look at us. We're bored. 
bit bored and having to wait for the next wave to come in because there's nothing else going on. He's hard pushing again, which is fine. You're really respectful of him, I can see it. You're really respectful and nervous. This play here, I don't know why that why you did just that. This little bit, we'll just walk through it and show you what I mean. Watch this. Okay? You clear this wave, and then you just chill. You just chill. And this is the sign of somebody worried about the lane opponent. And you need to get over this very, very quickly, Zaphoid. You can't do this. He's sat here against a full minion wave, okay? A full minion wave is coming in. His minion wave is absolutely miles away right now, all the way down the lane. There they are. So if that's the case, then why are you not going aggressive here? If he wants to stand this close to you, you show the fact that you are playing all. You're not that far behind him right now. A couple of stacks behind. That's about it. There's no real difference in the two of you here. If you full combo him, he, he's going to take pay badly for it. And he'll give you more respect in the lane then because of it. But what you do do instead, <laughs> do do, is you just play so passive and you just give him the lane. So what he does is he freezes it. And then you've got to walk all the way out, which you could have poked him already, you know? You could have already been poking him then before he got the lane in that situation. The gang comes in. Your combo escape wasn't so bad. Gonna dead to Astral Barrage here. Yeah. If I'm dead to Astral Barrage three times in a row, what I would do is definitely take a point in two. Take a point into your two just for your attack speed and your movement speed when you're in axe form. It'll help you out a little bit more. I think I probably would have looked for that, honestly. Get a point. Oh, you do. Okay, cool. You do pop playing. Suppose we can sound pleased about that. Really respectful in this lane. A bit overly respectful, I think, is the problem. Right, the rotation comes in. Relax, 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 relax. I was so panicked. I was so panicked. We'll watch it again. I was so panicky. This is normal speed. I was so panicky when this rotation comes in, but this is the perfect kill for you. You just gotta relax. Athena's coming. Gab's coming. He walks at you. This is a kill. Your axe misses, and then you miss your one. And they miss everything too, which doesn't really help, but... That's was probably dead here, I think. Good leap out. Good axe. Good damage. Very good. Good disengage. Juke him out now. Just juke him out. Juke him out. Let your team try and clean up. Juke him out. Good rotation to the jungle. That was really nicely done. Really nicely done. I wouldn't go back into this. Maybe with autos if it's a safe place to do so. It's a little bit safer to do so here. Get some more attacks on our fairies. Rama. I'm lucky with the axe. He's not body blocking very well for you. Uh, he's going to come in two for the kill. That play there wasn't the worst play out of you, Zephyr. I'm kind of okay with that. You got involved in the fight. Not having beads was unfortunate. You probably should have got beads against Ares a little bit earlier with the no escape. But you were trying to work on your Devourer's Gauntlets, which I can understand. Um, in that fight, you did what you needed to do. And you tried to come into support. You actually get two assists out of this, for sure. For sure. For sure. Still a play? Still a play. Well, you've lost your assist now. You've lost your assist. That's a shame. But what does that put us at now in lane? Zero four, zero four. That was a bad buy. That was a very bad buy. I wouldn't have gone for that. It would have been beads now, and you know why it would have been beads. Should have been beads there. Should have been beads there. If you're behind, buy your actives. If you're behind, buy actives. Invest into your actives early if you're behind. You know, about to basically have to clear one wave. This beads coming. Full boots and beads. Okay. Okay. The base wasn't so bad there. You'll be back for the wave again. Golf here has been started. There's not a whole lot you can do when you look at the map. When you look at the map here, there's not a whole lot you can do. Scylla, Athena in mid. Hercules on the other side of the jungle. Only Geb's rolling in. So when you turn up to this fight, I want you to play very, very safe here. Very safe. Watch from the back line. Good axe. Good damage. Good position. Good position. Good position. Good relocation. Good hail. Well, it's unfortunate hail missed, but it was a good idea. Staying at this range is fantastic. Your positioning is great here. I'm pleased with the disengage too. There was no reason to stay where you were staying. You were going to get anything more from that. 
Maybe you can support again. Now you got got combo back up again. Where we're we going? We're looking for a kill of the wall. Do not, do not chase kills. Do not chase kills as a hunter. This is the one time of the fight that you've changed your mind and gone for something you shouldn't be doing. Do not chase kills. Prioritize the targets in front of you. If you look at the map now, Bastet, no mana nearby. Poseidon, use pretty much everything. And it's nearby. Rama, half health nearby. You're trying to prioritize getting a shot over the wall. But by getting the shot over the wall to kill her, you're still out of position to support your teammates and do more damage to the rest of the fight. This is the bad call. That was a bad call. You should have been round there. And you could still have done that from this angle where you are now. And if you were already here, you could have helped clean this one up with your axe as well. But you're not going to find anything else here now. Go back to farming. Good call. You do go back to farming, which is good. The puck was okay then. And they're still pushing, you've not lost a creep from that, so it's fine. Unlucky with the axes. I'm just watching it kind of slow down. Axe combo was good. We could have gone Ares under the tower then. Don't be scared to fight this. Do not be scared to fight this. He's taking minion damage too. Leap, 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 leap. Switch stance and leap. Oh, your leap was on cooldown. I think your decisions... You, you, I can see you stressed in this game so much. So the air result's one thing, okay? And you beat it, which is good. But then you look to Axe Rama, okay? You look to Axe Rama. I don't know if you need to Axe Rama here. What you could have done is held your Axe, okay? You switch stance, and I would have just stayed in, uh, in range stance for now and used autos. Then when this happens, if you had Axe up now, you could have axed him under the tower. Switch stance again and ended his life. And then the disengage is going to happen because Rama's not going to be able to 2v1. Shame there was no shield available for you there to survive, but he still dies for it. So what we at zero five here. I'm gonna stop it here, Zafoid. And what the biggest thing that you need to work on going forward, okay, is stop respecting your lane opponent as much. In the lane itself, you didn't play so bad, in fairness. It was the matchup that let you down. And some of your decisions to when to throw the axe out kind of hurt. You missed a few combos that kind of hurt. And on all that can really punish you quite a bit. Um, and the other thing is lane freezing. Lane freezing when you're behind is important. And investing into the right sort of um, items when you're in a certain situation. If you're behind, buy actives. Always buy actives if you're behind. Just because it'll stop you from dying again. Okay, it may slow your build down, but sometimes you have to build them to make sure you stay alive so they don't get more kills and experience and continue to get further and further ahead of you. Eventually, they're going to have to buy those actives too, so it's still going to balance out in the long run over actives. But for the most part, be less respectful in the lane. Don't sit there and let Raman get as dominant as he was. Don't sit there under the tower and be, you know, wait for him to push it in because he'll lane freeze it against you. But when you have the chance to lane freeze, do so. There was one or two shines of light in this engagement that looked a lot better than it was, and you played, you played it very very well but it was just the fact that you were so worried after the start of the game that you played so defensive you just gave up the lane completely and that's why Rama's so confident now that he tower dived you then honestly into a full minion wave he felt like he could 1v1 you if you landed your abilities in that 1v1 fight he was dead and he just didn't have the respect and you gave him the lack of respect by not playing as good as you could have done because you were so worried about him in the lane good luck going forward with those I'm sure you can do better than that though certainly